Hey everyone, and welcome back to Scrap Mechanic. We are in my vanilla survival testing thingy. It's creative, but I've only got survival stuff. It's things I plan on trying to use. Um, the previous survival episode, we built this thing. So I would have covered, or at least given a glimpse of a couple of these, but Really quick, this is how the new um, resource buggy is going to look when it's done. As you can see, it just pretty much needs the uh, the wedges. Then I use a different back plate. I might change up the back, get rid of this chest so I can put four wheel steering on it, depending on how it is. But right now I've tested it a little bit and it works really well. So if you're curious on how to build this, watch one of the two previous survival videos. Um, as of releasing this video, it would be two videos ago. <clears throat> and it is basically ready to go for, as of now, the next update, which they have teased to have sticky tires which I'm assuming needs chemical because the buggy they showed had lots of chemical and sticky tires and then a new kind of drill bit. So I built a vehicle based on that and here we go. So if you want to see more on that, like I said, the previous um, video, but oops, that's that. <laughs> um, the next thing I will be building, or after that in the video I should go to, I built, started building the flatbed for it. Um, I think I got basically just the chassis and the bed done in, and after the video I quickly painted it. I need to finish the. Ooh, wait for this to go down. I need to put lights on it. As just like the other trailers, it will have the full lights, and the buggy can just drive right up on top. It gets welded to one of these pipes. In survival, I still have to measure this out, but either way, weld it to one of the pipes, comes up to here, and then we have eight resource bits. <clears throat> So we can go and collect lots of wood and stone, and metal. And then with this, a simple little change is if I take off the drill bits and then angle it down with two extra elbows and put uh, blades on it, it works to cut trees amazingly also. So therefore, once this is done, I just need a couple more resource things and put the lights on it, like I said, and finish this little gated off area. Put the wedges in once I have them. But then I will be building the transport truck. <clears throat> um, I was going to start with a different version. I was going to go with this one, just because I liked it. I had an automatic locking fifth wheel so I could just back into the trailer and tow it. I had a motor and engine and all that. But it didn't really make sense for survival. I Right now, I just want to make a base with vehicles that get the job done. So I took the same chassis and then made it a cab over design with a bunch of storage. <clears throat> Um, really quick, I'll go, I'll go front to back. So eventually once I get wedges, it'll have a sloped windshield with a bit of a sun visor, lights up top, lights at bottom, simple bumper. I could use piping to give it like a little tube bumper, like a, ooh, I could give it a nice big bull bar for ramming into a robot. So I might do that in survival. We'll see. And then... It's a simple interior. I can make it better in survival, but this is just planning. 
Um, it'll have like armor and stuff because this will be like my main transport truck. Uh, two seater for now. I can, uh, I could easily fit another seat actually. So I should be able to. There's something in the way, probably the switch. I'll reorganize it and then I can stick another seat in there. And then, yeah, even if it's just one of the little saddles. Um, either way, going from front to back, now I guess I should lift the cap <clears throat> in survival for lag's sake. I'm probably not going to do the lifting cap, but this is how I had it so I could access. <clears throat> Excuse me. All the stuff inside. So, controllers, I think those are for the doors. That's for tilt engine. This is for the signals. This is glitching and then the light control. It's a piston for the taillights. I'll show underneath in a second. And then going back, we have two resource collectors that should be low enough that they can pick stuff up and still be high enough to have a decent ride height. It's two blocks of ground clearance, which seems to be more than enough for most survival stuff. And then that, I think, is three, just because it's actually crawling over stuff and so on. Um, another thing I wanted to make sure with this is that the resource containers could just come off without interfering with anything, so that I could swap them with this trailer and just break up resources with that <clears throat> and then throw that on the trailer drive around with the truck i might make a pivot right here if i can move the piston back which i probably can other than the axle i'll figure out a way to move the piston back um i also put a straight axle on it just because i felt like it just make it a bit stronger blah 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 because i just like it um but if I can find a better spot for the piston, I can probably make it go side to side as well instead. And then I'm thinking of putting a pivot here with a couple springs to limit it. I can explain when I actually build it. So it can have better articulation. But back to this, I wanted to make sure I could swap out the resource canisters without it interfering with anything. So I just drive around this, pick up the resources from that, that left behind, fill up the containers, swap them out, fill them up until they're all full, and then head back to base and unload them. <clears throat> um, I'll probably end up making a really big resource area for this. I don't know. I'll see once I rebuild it. I might end up just using the same spot I have, but lifting it. And changing it a bit so that I can back this in easily. Um, other than that, it just has the typical lights, lots of storage chests throughout. Like it's a double wall of storage chests, as it's the resource truck. The RV will become like the mobile base, and then this will be, as you can see, everything for resources. Um. It has two gas tanks because I don't think I'll really be going far at once. But look at all the storage for extra gas. I'm not worried about it. And then it has the typical rear suspension that I have been using. It just hasn't been modified. Same with that. It hasn't been changed to uh, carry more weight like I've been doing in survival. Be simple fifth wheel that I've been using. Um, I've gone over this trailer, so I'm going to go over this trailer next. This is the one that I plan on using for the farming, so taking things to the packaging plant and then bringing it back. Um, there are two, four veggies and four fruits in this, I believe. I counted them, I can't really remember, but there's two different plants, four things at each. So, I put four chests on one side, and it actually fit nice. 
quite nicely because that's where the skirt would end. So just a nice little skirt and four chests on either side. And then in the middle, at the back, I put a, uh, a vacuum pump so that you can just quickly take it off. You pull up to the, uh, yeah, the depot, I'll call it. I think that's what I called it. But either way, you pull up, line up whichever fruit or vegetable you want to unload. You put the, uh, do that thing that I don't think I have in my inventory. I don't, so one second. You put the vacuum on whichever one you want, so let's see that one. You attach it to your little timer thingy. In the survival version, I'll have a, a gate that's in a better spot, maybe right here, or under this switch. Yeah, I'll put it under this switch. So you connect the gate or your timer to the vacuum, and then you turn it on. And it just starts spitting out stuff. Spitting out whatever you have in it. And then when you're done, you take it back off, put it back, back, like so. And then all your crates can go on top. So. And this holds a lot. It's two by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it holds 14 crates. It's a 53 block long trailer. <clears throat> um, if you're curious, again, how to make any of this, I cover all of this in my survival because this is just my planning world. Like, I built the RV here before I actually built it in survival. So, um, that's really it for that trailer. And then it just has the typical lights and then the new. Uh, legs that I've been doing instead of using pistons because pistons are weak and take too much resources. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Next, I guess, would be the liquids trailer. Um, it's a bit resource heavy due to having two vacuum pumps for each. The way I set it up, it can be done with one vacuum pump and you don't need this many, so personally, I would put probably the middle one on of each, and then do the first line. And this is just below those. Do so that's water. M. So all I did for these was I went from the back of the trailer this but upright there we go excuse me so it goes the uh the container on the very back of the trailer to the uh, pump <clears throat> and then there's another one like so and then i just went along uh that one that one and then i alternated so that they are all connected in pairs. These two are connected, these two, and then these two. Next, you go through each pair and put ones connecting like so. And you have tons of storage that <clears throat> I can't really think of much, a much smaller way to do it. Because every space I can use for storage has storage. And as it fills up, it just goes through. As this one fills up, it goes to this one. And then it snakes through. And then if you're only using the one pump, it comes around here and then snakes through the other side. Or you can use the two pumps and fill both lines at the same time. And then same with water. Um... And then you just use... I haven't put a timer on this one yet. I don't think. No, no. Nope, I didn't put a timer on this one yet, but just like that trailer, you would just use... Or no, this just uses a switch because these suck up automatically. Do these... 
eject automatically too. I might need to actually try that. That might need a time might not need a timer on them. This I don't think does. It should just suck up constantly when it's in water or chemical. So either way, you back it into water, turn it on, <clears throat> and then it does its thing until it's full. And then you just drive away. Um do I want to figure out what else to do or show. Once we get to I want to do the turrets last. I will definitely explain how I'm going to do the defenses and turret. But once we get down into the caves, I'm going to need a trailer for this. <clears throat> because based on the concept art, there will be a battery and maybe some other stuff to haul around. So I wanted some kind of flatbed that I could also use for other stuff in the meantime. And this is the main design I think I'll go with. It has really good uh, angle of approach and departure. It should be fairly stable and it doesn't really need suspension. And it tows behind that nice. I can just put an extra chemical container on it with sticky tires and there we go. Or I'm going to go with a slightly bigger one with springs and just a simple idea. I took the tailgate off because it kept flipping away for some reason. Um, so yeah, just plan on figuring out some kind of simple trailer for that once the um, next update comes out. But turrets, probably what everybody wants to see. So, these are my three main designs. As it starts going off because I'm standing on it. Um, I'll probably end up using mainly this one. Because it will be the easiest to set up in survival, I feel. And the easiest to maintain. Because the button and the switch both go to the top two. And then this one goes to the uh, gun. I'll explain more in a minute, but basically... Inputs go to these two, and then output. It's simple. And then this is just kind of elaborating on it. So, I'm actually going to throw this onto the trailer really quick, because I don't need it off of the trailer anymore. It's only been off the trailer because I've been working on it and showing up. And I managed to get it to fit perfectly, so that the little jut out from the chemical container it's in between the ramps, and then taillights and wheels just kind of hold it in place. And then that's in line with the front, like I said, and yeah. Either way, back to turrets. I went, I looked on Google, I looked on like, the workshop, and I couldn't find anything that helped me make them, or really explained how to do it. So, uh, go to a turret. As you can see, I checked out a couple. Just a couple from mods, but this one and I think this one were vanilla, and I didn't like either of them. So, I made, as you can see, my Mark 1, my Mark 2, and my Mark 3. And then a template. So let's pull out the template really quick. The way I did this is... Yeah, I'm not even using both bearings, because this was as I was testing. So, the way I did this is I went step by step, and I figured I needed a spud gun that oscillated. So, I was going to use motors at first, and then I managed to make it even more simple. So, it's just one bearing and a, uh, a controller. And then for my range of motion, I have it set to be a base of 60, as you can see here. And then when it is on, it does a 120 degree sweep. So it goes this way and then back and then it loops and then it just continues. And then therefore I have my oscillating spud gun. So, 
then I figured I would need a way to interrupt it, a way to turn it on and off and interrupt. So an XOR gate going to the controller, and then I have the sensor going to the gate that's mounted on the gun, <clears throat> and then I have a switch going to the controller, or the gate. So therefore, either the switch or the, the switch, either the switch or the switch, either the switch or the sensor can, as you can see, make it turn on and off, or the rotation-wise, or interrupt it. Next, I needed the firing circuit. So what I did was put a simple timer, which is a lo uh, two logic gates and then a timer, which makes a clock. And then one logic gate, the one going into, yes, the gate going into the timer is set to NAND. And then this gate is set to AND. So you have NAND, going into the timer, timer going into AND, AND going into NAND. Simple enough, I guess. If you just look at that, you can see how the lines go. And then I have the switch going to the NAND timer. That locks basically everything on, I guess. If you go to the other one, it might lock it off, or it might mess it up, I'm not sure. Either way, that enables and disables the oh i have two going there okay so one disables one input disables and enables the timer and then it looks like i have another one yes and then i have another one enabling and disabling the actual firing itself so now when it's turned on the circuit can go and then that goes to this circuit, which just takes this, right, okay. So really quick, just clear my thought. Now that we have the alternating and the timer, now we can go to the firing circuit. <clears throat> so this gate here, that one, that one just made them different. So this gate here, turns on and off the firing circuit. So we have the switch coming in to allow it to actually turn on because it is an AND gate. So it needs the switch and the sensor. So both of those are connected to it, as you can see. And then this gate is connected to both of these gates. Just simple straight across this gate and then that gate. So that way, I can connect one of the timer gates to one of them. So I'll go like this. Those two are connected. These two are connected. And then the white one connects to both of these. So then that way, when the switch and the sensor go off, it fires. So. And... If I use, trying to get my thoughts straight again, I use the two sensors. You can do one and use one spud gun, or just use one as a simple output like that one turret. But I find if you use up to three outputs, so that would be more like, say this. If you were to go like this, do. see how I connected that really quick and then you could connect a third turret or third spud gun to this one and they would all fire on a quick separate tick and then as long as something's in it in front of it long enough it wouldn't be three spuds hitting them at once it would be three in succession which would help push them back and give you more space so on. So basically, I took that. I'll be going over this again in survival, by the way, so this was confusing. 
check that out. So, basically, I then put it into a smaller format, and I wanted to make sure it was low to the ground so that it would get basically anything that came up to it. Um, this one, like I said, is simple. Just turn it on. It kind of wiggles back and forth. And you can weld it into whatever you want. All the logic is just kind of smushed into this little spot. It's not even glitch welded, it's just kind of... Oh. I might just leave that to do whatever it wants. <laughs> um, but then, as I mentioned, you can use the multiple outputs on something like this. This one I kind of went just all out with. Not quite this one, this was more of a, another compact design I wanted, or more of like something you could set somewhere. This is like a turret, like a pillbox turret or something. I'm gonna let one of those just do its thing one of these days, but either way, this is like one of the big, I don't want anything to really get by, like nothing kind of thing. So it's the same concept, but as I said, I have, I can turn off, that has three outputs running on ever so slightly different ticks, and it just turns a lot faster. Um. <clears throat> One of the outputs, yeah, the main gun output goes to a light so that when it's going off, you can tell which one it is. And then that should be set to 20 or so. And as you can see, it has so much power, it flips itself over and it's not even firing at once. But... That's, that's why you weld it somewhere. Anyways, um, that with the wall that I built should keep the farm plot nice and safe for now. And then I'll find another place to build like a fully automated farm plot because with the different containers, as my wife laughs at the turret flopping around, um, you can use the different containers. There's a seed container somewhere, and a uh, yeah, seed container and a fertilizer container. So I plan on making the farm plots fully automated at one point, other than probably setting it to go and harvesting. And if I use a sensor and just harvest them in an order, I can probably have it so all I have to do is run up and harvest and then it just automatically starts again. So that's the plan for the farm now that I have the basic one up and going. Um, and that's just the short term plan for now. My main goal right now is to get the vehicles done so that I'm ready for the next update and can get the spud guns and stuff for the fence and going to the uh, warehouse so yeah if you have any questions feel free to ask but bear in mind like i said i might answer them in the next couple survival videos um if you have any advice on something feel free to let me know and uh yeah if you want access to more of my content i'm trying to do early release stuff through patreon but i can't figure out how to do early access in youtube the way that I found before isn't working, so either way, if you like what I do, want access to my blueprints, all of this stuff will be accessible through my Patreon, this map, my survival map, everything, including stuff from other games. So yeah, if you like my stuff, my work, my videos, whatever, want to support me more, there you go. Either way, I hope you enjoyed, and thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.